Hi, I'm Mr. Richmond. This is Integrated Math 2, Unit 9.5, Lesson Summary. So in this uh, last section here for Unit 9, we're finishing up our study of circles, and we're going to look at a few theorems involving tangent segments and secant segments. So before we can get into those theorems too much, we need to know some of these definitions here, be able to recognize a secant segment or a tangent segment. So let's start. So a tangent segment is the segment formed from an exterior point of a circle to the point of tangency. So if you take a look at my diagram here, I have a tangent line formed by AB, B being a point of tangency, and I have a tangent line AC with a point of tangency C. My tangent segment would be AB, which is a segment going from an intersection point outside to my point of tangency, or AC. Those are both examples of tangent segments. And while we're on that, let's talk about the tangent segment theorem. It's one of our easier theorems today. It states that if two tangent segments are drawn from the same point on the exterior of a circle, that same point would be A, then the tangent segments are congruent. So AB is always going to be congruent to AC when you have two tangent segments, two tangent lines intersecting. Let's talk about a secant segment. And just a reminder, a secant is a line that passes through a circle, intersects at two points. A secant segment is a segment connecting the intersection point of two secants and the intersection point of a secant of the secant and circle. So for example, here I have C line CBA that is a secant, and I have line CED that is a secant. A secant segment can be this point of intersection on the outside through to the endpoint uh, of the of the tangent, or sorry, of the secant. So CA is an example of a secant segment. Um, when we talk about some of the theorems of this, so we also talk about like the exterior secant segment. So the entire thing is a secant segment. Just CB can be considered an exterior secant segment. So let's use that now to get into a theorem. This theorem states if two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, so I have two secant lines intersecting here at point C in the exterior of a circle, then the product of the lengths of the secant segment and its internal secant segment is equal to the product of the lengths of the second secant segment and its external secant segment. So a mouthful there. Let's see if I can clarify that a little further. CA is the secant segment, CB is the exterior. So what this, this statement is saying is the entire secant segment here, AC, times just its exterior portion, BC, must stay in proportion or stay equal to the other secant, DC times DE. And so I wrote it again here. Segment AC times segment BC must be equal to the entire segment DC times EC. A lot of students will get this mixed up and do AB times BC instead, the interior uh, chord basically, um, instead of the whole secant. So remember, secants are going all the way through, so a secant segment has to be the whole thing from that exterior point to that, otherwise you're doing a chord. Okay, it's one way to help remember it. And our last um, theorem here today combines the two of these really and gives us a secant and a tangent theorem. So the secant tangent theorem states, if a tangent and secant intersect in the exterior of a circle, here's my secant intersecting in the exterior with my tangent, then the product of the lengths of the secant segment and its internal segment is equal to the square of the length of the tangent segment. Yet again, another mouthful. How do we clarify that? Well, it's kind of almost like a combination of the two. I know that two tangent se uh, segments are equal, but it also works that if I was to take this tangent and turn it into a secant, this tangent segment, the, the kind of the combination of those two equals a secant. So AB, my tangent segment, times itself squared, so AB squared, is equal to AC, the seg uh, exterior secant segment, times AD, the entire mm -hmm. secant segment. So the tangent segment squared equals the exterior secant times the full secant. Okay? And so, you know, practice is definitely going to be important with this, but also taking some time, maybe doing some flashcards to try to memorize these theorems, because they're fair fairly similar. At this point, there has been a lot of them. Um, really tough to be successful on this test without having a really strong uh, knowledge of the theorem. So flashcards, flashcards, flashcards. Huge for this chapter. So let's try a couple examples. So I have four of them, three on this board, and then I'll do one more on the other. That's going to kind of use these. Now, 
Example one, I threw this in here, even though you'll notice that it doesn't really apply directly to anything that we were learning in the session. But I looked at the homework, and the homework starts with a couple problems regarding triangles like this, and it's actually using a, a previous theorem involving tangents. So I just thought I would throw it in here in case you were running into the homework problems and uh, had some trouble and you were referencing this video. Well, you can get your answer here. So we learned in a previous session that if I have a tangent line, right, intersecting a circle at one point, because that's what a tangent does, and a radius of a circle, they always form a right angle. And so that's going to allow us to do quite a few different things with right triangles. We can draw them a lot of different ways, but it's creating a right triangle uh, in, the, in the, the circle itself, in the diagram. And what they'll typically do is give you one of those two angles, or at least a way of finding one of those two angles. In my example, I gave you that angle C here is 25 degrees. As long as I know that theorem, that a tangent's always perpendicular to a radius, then that gives me a right angle at angle B, and I can use the triangle sum theorem, that all angles in a triangle add up to 180, to solve this. Um, 90 degrees plus 25 degrees plus my measure of angle A that I don't know has to equal 180 degrees. And I can add 90 and 25 together, subtract them from 180, and get the measure of angle A. So that would be 115, giving me 65 degrees for the measure of angle A by subtracting those over. Okay, moving on now to more of the stuff that requires these actual theorems. So example two, I have two secants intersecting. So that's going to probably be my secant segment theorem. It's creating secant segments. And that theorem states that the entire secant times its exterior segment, uh, secant, sorry, mouthful, has to equal the other entire secant segment times its uh, smaller exterior segment. So let's just write the, the equation itself here, and then we can work it out, because I'm a little, little low on room. So RW, the entire secant, times YW, the exterior, has to equal ZW times XW. That's my basic formula here. So, by plugging in the actual segments given, I can work this out. RW is actually 12 and 2, because these two segments are brought together, so 12 plus 2 is 14. Just be careful to make sure you're using the segment addition posit properly there. Um, times YW, which is 2, Okay, my exterior segment has to equal the entire segment here. And here's the problem. I have an unknown. I don't know what yx is. Um, so to be able to, to find, or sorry, zx, I don't know what zx is, but in order to be able to find zw, I have to kind of kind of know that. So here's what I'm going to do. zw, I'm going to express as zx, which is what I'm trying to find, by the way. Um, and they have it listed as xz, so maybe I should call it that xz plus 3 is equivalent to zw, xz my unknown plus 3, times xw, which is 3. So you're going to a lot of times end up with a distributive property type situation with these problems depending on what your unknown is. Now that I have that, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to show you how to solve that algebraically. So it's 14 times 2 equals xz plus 3 times 3. Let's make sure I wrote that right. 4 times 2 equals xz plus 3 times 3. And now it's just a matter of using the algebra and solving out. 14 times 2 is 28. 3 times xz is 3xz. 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so plus 9. Now I can subtract 9 from both sides. And I get 19 equals xz, and all I do is divide by 3 to isolate, and I can say xz equals 19 thirds, or if you want to do some long division, get a decimal, you can do that if you like, depends on what your teacher wants. 3 goes into 19 six times, so 6 and 1 third, or 6.3333 repeat, depending on what you want. So, that's it for that problem. We found it. It's not always going to work out to a nice whole number. A lot of times you can't get decimals. So moving on now. Now we have two tangents uh, intersecting on the outside of a circle. That's going to be my tangent segment theorem. 
that was our easier one. We just know the tangent segments are equal. So in this problem it says if QR is 10 centimeters, what is QS? Well, if these are tangent segments intersecting at the same point, they have to be the same. So that's actually a little bit more straightforward. I just know that SR is also 10 centimeters. So that's kind of our easy one today. Last example. Gives us a tangent and a secant. Tangent and a secant. And this was our formula that said the tangent squared equals the full secant length times the exterior secant segment. So I'm going to set that up exactly as I just said. The tangent segment UW squared has to equal the entire secant YW times the exterior secant segment XW. And plug in whatever givens I have. So I don't have UW, but I do have that YW is 8 and that XW is 2. So I now know that UW squared equals 8 times 2, which means UW squared equals 16, which means UW has to be a number that when squared is 16, so guess and check can give you 4 there. But we have dealt with some of these equations previously. We know we can uh, solve or undo a square operation by doing its inverse, a square root. So UW must be the square root of 16, which is 4. And so that must be the length of that tangent segment, U, uh, UW. So hopefully that helps you. Again, I can't stress enough the importance of flashcards here in this chapter. Uh, make a flashcard for each theorem, maybe even make a sample problem of each one on the back side, and study those a lot, and this can really become an easy test for you. Um, but without those flashcards, it can be tough. So thank you, and good luck.